Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. It's me, the one and only Big Game Damon. I'm here with my main man, too. What's going on? We are talking about, for this dish, the week in sports. The week in sports. And let's go right into it. Big blockbuster trade. NBA draft. We're shooting this on a Friday. NBA draft was last night. The Lakers. Russell listen, Westbrook. Listen. Um, the that, arms that, race continues in the NBA. I was surprised that that's the direction that they went. Here's what I would say, though. My initial reaction was, this can't work. You know, they... He, he, they need the spacers. He's yeah, not a spacer. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. They got the star power, mm -hmm. but is it the right fit? It's not. But then, you know what I thought about? The last time I felt this way was when Chris Paul got traded to Houston. Mm -hmm. And I said, Chris Paul and Harden can't play together? That doesn't make any sense. And if Chris Paul doesn't hurt his hamstring, they probably win a championship. So I'm intrigued. So instead of saying that it doesn't make sense, it can't work, because I don't know if Westbrook can play without the ball. And LeBron, of course, is great with the ball. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested to see how this works out. Now, they did all play together in the Olympics. So there is some com camaraderie there. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to say I'm intrigued by this. Yeah. Did the Lakers give away too much? No. 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 It's, at the end of the day, it's just you, you can go find a Kuzman or a Catavius Pope. Yeah. Anywhere, yeah, and they'll they'll get that. that. They'll get that in free agency. And Danny Green will probably be with them. Yeah, next <laughs> next year. So, so yeah, it, um, it looks like Lakerville was out on Kuzma anyway. So <laughs> yeah, Laker, yeah, the Laker yeah. Nation. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah, my whole deal is I'm kind of with you on that. Where I saw them, like I don't know if that's a great fit, but in the NBA, at the end of the day, you gotta have talent. Mm -hmm. You gotta like talent wins in the end. And you need to have one of the, the like you need a collection, you know, of really good players. I think that kind of hurts the Sixers, honestly. Where if you look at someone like like Ben Simmons is supposed to be your other guy, and when you talk about star power, his star power is kind of limited, you know. And I think that's that's kind of an albatross for the Sixers, where you need to get more out of him. And it's an arms race. The NBA, let's face it, it is an arms race. You knew the Lakers, when the Lakers went out early, you knew that something big was going to come down. They, yeah. don't, they don't sit on their, yeah, sit on their I, toes. Listen, like I said, it, it's going to be very intriguing to watch them play and, and to watch um, who has the ball. Yeah. Like that, that's, that's really intriguing. I mean, I, I'm just going to sit back and watch it and, and enjoy it. Like, I'll put it like this. If you made me wager... I think it'll be successful because of Braun. Yeah. I'm also interested to see, like, the championship chasers who's going to sign on the team now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, buyout sees it coming. You know, so. Ray <laughs> Allen stretching somewhere, like, rrr, rrr, get these creaks out my shoulder, out my shooting arm. Yeah. So, no, no, I'm just kidding. He's, he's not coming back. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> so, so, what else has happened in sports? NBA draft? Anything really stand out to you last night from the draft? No, not really. It was it, it was kind of boring. Yeah, it was you know? really straightforward. And as a Philadelphia fan, it was actually refreshing where the pick didn't matter. Like it's not somebody that's going to come in and change life and everything. So from that, from a local perspective, it just was like ho hum. And overall, you know, just I'm excited for the you know the young guys that that's going to the league. But mm -hmm. yeah, I just you know. I actually flipped the channel a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I flipped the channel a lot. <laughs> I'm be honest. <laughs> a lot. So, yeah, you know, it was pretty, I think it was just pretty straightforward. You know, I always was checking my phone to see if anything came down, anything big. But, you know, I just think with, you know, some people were expecting a Ben Simmons trade. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago where it's like, you know, the Sixers are kind of at an impasse because you don't yeah. want to sell low. Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely happy because, as I said a few weeks ago, I didn't think Dal Murray would give him away. Mm -hmm. And if the rumors are true about what we're hearing, the asking prices, that I'm excited about that. because Four he, ones? Yeah, he's, he's treating Ben Simmons like a commodity. Like, this is what Ben Simmons would have commanded last offseason if he was available. And to see that Dal Murray is holding firm with that, Makes me happy. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. dating. Don't sell low. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sell low. 
<laughs> so or you know it's like it's like a stock you know you already invested in it it's yeah. you know just hold it you know till you get what you need out of it yeah but. so and that kind of um goes into a what I'm going to talk about for this week and I'm only going to stay on it very briefly okay. um in regards to the Olympics, you know, with Simone, yes. Simone Biles and her just, you know, doing what she felt she needed to do. And there were a lot of opinions. And I mainly want to, like, kind of address the opinions more than her in particular. And I just want to say, personally, I don't think she owes anyone anything. Period. You know, we were talking mm -hmm. about this a bit off camera. Where I don't think she owes anyone anything. I think she's... You know, she's overcome a lot. If anyone knows anything about her backstory, a lot of people are questioning her heart. When you see what she's been through and what she's overcome while she was doing gymnastics, I think that's out. And I don't think she owes anyone anything. She's done enough. She's, she's done her part in regards to this country, winning medals, representing this country. She's been a fantastic role model. And, you know, when the issue, when it comes down to the most important health is your mental health. You know, and the people, I think a lot of the people who are being negative towards her, I think it's very important to ignore them right now um, because they just don't know. They never could be in her situation or understand what she's going through. And when you put the work in to get yourself to a particular spot, that's your spot. OK. And what you do with it is up to your discretion. That's not for someone else to judge. So I'll just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. And I'm going to move on and just ignore that negative crowd. And I think it would be, I highly recommend others do so. That's my personal opinion. That was uh, very, very well said. And I'll just add, you know, mental health is a very touchy subject. It's, it, to me, it's like questioning somebody's heart. You, you, you can't quite, you don't know what somebody's, their heart is. So like I said, I wish her well. I wish everybody suffering, suffering with mental health well and... You, you stated that well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we'll just leave it there. <laughs> we'll just leave it there. Okay. So let's get into something really quick, something I'm going to do, kind of fun, a little segment. We're going to call this seg segment Philadelphia Wizard of Oz. So let's say the great wizard of Philadelphia sports. Okay. okay. So all of the four teams are going to, they're going to the wizard. So we all know the whole concept of the Wizard of Oz. The okay. wizard can either give you courage a heart, brains, or let's say home because Dorothy needed to go home. And Dorothy, all she needed to do was click her heels. She always had the power from day one. So if you're home, you're kind of straight and you're in a good spot. Okay? So that's the concept. Okay. All right? So let's do this one when we do Wizard of Oz. Let's talk about the four major franchises. Okay. So let's start with the Philadelphia Phillies. Heart, brains, courage, or home? I'm going to go brains now of course we record this after the trade and deadline but i just don't think that they should believe that they can win anything this year i mean if they win the division it'll be a slight miracle but it's possible but they have the brains to know that i think they should have been sellers i think they they should have tried to get some replenish the farm system with some of the major league talent that they could have got rid of. They could have traded McCutcheon. They could have traded Hoskins. And they could have seen what Nola could have brought them back. So I just I want them to get wisdom to not think that there's something that they're not. Yeah, I would agree with Brains as well. And I'm going to go, you're going for more micro. I'm going to go macro and look at this franchise's history. You know, um, the Phillies are a tough watch because they're the same team with the same issues every year. And it, it gets to a point where that's the front office. That's the front office. And that's why it has to be brains where, you know, historically this has been a franchise of bad moves and a poor farm system. And 10 years ago when that championship was won, God, over 10 years ago, it was, they had a fantastic, all of those players were homegrown. Yeah. And then you just, you know, you add it and you accent it. Yeah, and you know, did. but those players were homegrown. That's how you win. Yeah. That's how you win, and this is just the farm system has just been. And they horrific. they had the farm system to go get a Cliff Lee, a Roy Holiday, on top yeah. of that. So I know exactly what you're saying. And it's just, but if you look at that, was like this weird nexus in history. When you look at the Phillies, it's generally been bad farm system, 
terrible bullpen, um, a couple of really good starters in key positions to keep people in the seats, to keep people from going. But other than that, it's the same team. Every year, it's the same team. Like it, it's for me, it's like Groundhog Day. Watching the Phillies is, as a fan, is Groundhog Day. Same team, same issues, same problems, never resolved. Every year, you can hear my frustration I as know. a Phillies I'm like, fan. Yeah, you think it's kind yeah, of yeah. This is like that's my team. I live, Phillies are my first love. It's <laughs> it is personal, you know. It is personal. <laughs> right. So all right, we'll drop it. We'll drop it. All right. So let's go next team, Philadelphia Eagles. What do they need from the Philadelphia Wizard? Can I say patience? Patience. Can I say so? Just stay the course. Like don't. So we'll put we'll put them home. Yeah, like so they so they just need to stay the course. Let it play out, you know. Don't get seduced one way or the other. You know, if things are going good, if things are going bad, don't be seduced. Let it like stick to the plan that this is an evaluation year, and whatever happens, happens. We're not going to force nothing one way or the other. And and we can throw a little bit of courage in there as well that you have the courage to stay the course. Okay, and that dangling carrot, you know, that might come up. Yes. Or, you know, like when I saw them sign Kerrigan and then, you know, with Steve Nelson, I'm like, are they trying to win this year? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just like you said, stay the course. Stay the course. Rome isn't built in a day and this team's not going to be rebuilt in a day, especially after what happened last year. All right. So let's go to the Flyers now. And I'm actually going to start our first with the Flyers because I think they're so similar to the Phillies where it's almost an incarnation of the same issues every year and it's the same team kind of every year you know like variations like you'll get a good flyers year and then you'll get a really bad flyers year mm -hmm. um in that sense and but the overall the ominous cloud is always the goalie you know and i think it's the same thing you know like and for the phillies and i don't know if you agree with me or not but kind of like how the phillies have the same issues year in and year out I'm i kind of feel the flyers I'm are signing back off that and I'm going to go somewhere here that, you know, might be a little taboo, but they're similar in lack of minorities or they just look the same. Same type of players. It's like the, the rest of the league has a certain type of player, but the Flyers of Phillies don't. I'll go to the Phillies where, you know, they historically have been criticized for that and especially you look at um the influx of spanish-speaking players mm -hmm. and just i think like you can't even the, i'll say for the phillies you can't even tell because their farm system is so bad <laughs> you know where it's like you know they can't get kids from the suburbs so i i, I think whatever whatever means developing better players like I, I just I don't know if it's scouting I don't know if it's, if it's player development but how about they need a, a better sense of direction yeah you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you because it seems like they're in a constant loop of just whatever's going on in those front offices they're just the the, the behavior is operant conditioning this is the way we do things this is the flyer way this is the Philly way this it seems yeah. like it and as, it, as from a fan outsider's perspective this is the way we do things and it, and it, and and not to be controversial, but it, it feels like they do it to appease a certain type of fan. That they're trying to bring in. Yes. So let's say, for example, like you got you bring in Jim Tony, even though you got Ryan Howard killing it in the minors. So yeah. So like Philly's philosophy, in my opinion, is like trying to pick up a turd from the clean end. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, <laughs> they keep doing it where it's like there is no clean end. Right, you need to like you need to fundamentally. What are we doing wrong? How can we change? How can we move forward? And you know, like honestly, if you need to get a more diverse type of thinking for a more diverse and modern player yes. as well, and that's why I think they're just kind of stuck in the mud. Both of these franchises, they're just and they're in this constant loop, and you just repeat yourself. You just repeat failure after a while. All right, so let's close with the team that we thought was the closest knocking on the door. What do they need from the Wizards, the Philadelphia 76ers? They need the courage to go for it. They need the courage 
to not get stuck in this, you know, well, we're a top three team in the conference and, you know, play this long game. Have the courage to go for it. Whatever that means, whatever moves you need to make, have the courage to push your chips all in and say, in the next two years, we're doing everything to have a parade with the Sixers coming down Broad Street. Yeah. And I think if you look at teams like the Lakers, that's what they do. Yes. They go all in. They're trying to win. And I think if the Sixers try to be cool. I think the sister, Sixers, and this is why I would go courage. I think the Sixers operate their franchise like they have low self-esteem. Low franchise. Okay. Like, just look at the Ben Simmons thing years ago when Magic Johnson's offering to help him. And the Sixers are like, no, we don't want it to be. T- what if he wants to go to L.A.? And you hear all of the fans, what if he wants to go to L.A.? And then the Sixers fans are so happy with, you know, we're number one. And, you know, it's just a lot of just, you know, like you never got asked out for a date. And then you finally do. And you kind of aren't looking at the big picture. You're just so happy. Like, someone asked me out. I think that's kind of the way the Sixers operate. That's kind of, and I'm, I'm going to exclude Maury from this, but I just think overall the ba- the fan base, just the approach these last couple of years, I think they need to look at themselves as we look at our history, look at the great players we've had in this town, look at traditionally we've been one of the NBA's best franchises. We are trying, like you said, we're trying to win. And they have to have the heart to go out there and do so. You know, they have to have the heart. And I'll put heart and courage together. You can't be, you can't be scared to fail. You can't be scared to fail. And I think that's kind of where the Sixers are. Where they're just, oh, well, you know, oh, well, you know, and, you know, I think, uh, like, I think there's too much man be pamby surrounding that franchise. And I think it's evident. And look at the way they were bounced from the playoffs. Look at the way they were bounced from the playoffs. And a lot starting on Ben Simmons, where a lot of times he just seems like he's good. You know, I think there's too many people who are good in, uh, surrounding that franchise. Where's the hunger? Where's that fight? Where's that anger? Where are people mad? Like, I've seen the outsiders more angry than the people who are actually in, involved with the team. Yeah. Where's that fire? I, that I, I, fire, that passion is missing. Yeah, I would agree. They, they need an emotional leader that can play. And, it, and I'm not talking about MB. They need somebody that can feed off of NB because NB is to an extent an emotional player and they need somebody that can give him that juice too that can actually that's actually a contributor yeah that, you know so it can't be a rah-rah guy on the bench waving the towel yeah it's got to be somebody out there that they need like a, a killer yeah somebody they need that a killer on the court isn't having a good game that can just I got it watch a this Lillard or Chris Paul somebody that's going to be like yo uh-uh no I, I got confidence in you, Daryl. Got confidence in you. Yeah, I, I think he'll do something as well because he's an outsider. And he's already the most competent GM in Philadelphia. So after one year. So. All right. So any closing thoughts? Any closing thoughts? Going into next week, we got Eagles training camp. Um, preseason's coming up. No, it's my only thought is I got to get my uh, fantasy draft board together. But other than yeah. that, and we're, uh, we're gonna uh, have we're gonna have a fantasy <laughs> special coming up. So look look forward to that as well. You know, you're not gonna you're gonna give general tips, nothing specific, because I know you got like your teams ready to go. Listen, so. it, guys in my league can't beat me anyway, so I, I can give you it all. The time. Yeah, those, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah they, they won't listen anyway. So. <laughs> you give them open book test, they still fail. So. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. That is it for this episode of The Dish. Once again, I'm Big Game Dame. This is my main man, Do. Follow us, social media. You know where to look. And we are out. See you next time.